Welcome to the Occupy Ukiah show for April 12th, 2012. My name is Charlie Vaughn. Um, we've got a lot going on as usual in the Occupy Ukiah world. Um, today we've got a special guest. Ellen Faulkner is coming on to t tell us about the uh, Richardson Grove activity. Um, some of you may know about Richardson Grove and some of you may not. So Ellen's going to be here to uh, fill us in on, on the whole scene, the history of it, what's happening, and what's going to be happening. That'll be coming up uh, in a little while. Um, one, of the, one of the big uh, big news items for Occupy Ukiah, we can feel pretty happy that the uh, Ukiah Planning Commission um, turned down Walmart's application for expansion. Um, last night, and um, I thought they did that at the last meeting, but I guess they have to do it twice. You know how politics works. So uh, as far as it goes, it's looking like the issue is pretty much a cold, dead issue for Walmart. At this point, there is a possibility that can be appealed to the city council, and I guess legally or somehow the city council can overturn it. It would be pretty unlikely it would be against the sentiments of the community. So right now we're feeling pretty happy with the work that was put in to um, revealing some of the truths about Walmart and the way they operate. And uh, I think we feel pretty confident that they're not going to expand anytime soon and we just have to be vigilant. That's what this is all about. As soon as you win a victory of some sort, you gotta keep close watch because they have a way of uh, of coming back a year or two later. I uh, just want to remind everybody we have our General Assembly on Saturdays, every Saturday, 10 a.m. during the Farmer's Market at um, Alex Thomas Park. You'll see our uh, Occupy Ukiah canopy. Please feel free to stop by, say hello. If you have an issue to talk about, if you have questions, we can um, hand out any literature that we have from from Occupy Ukiah. We also hand out literature from other groups that we align with. Uh, we could possibly have some uh, Richardson Grove things to pass out, but please come and check things out. Ask questions. Uh, toss in your two cents. Listen. Check out our process. Uh, we're pretty friendly people, and we are all about welcoming the public on Saturdays. Um, also, uh, look for the uh, Occupy the Airwaves radio show with uh, your host Tom Ray, and that's every Wednesday on KMEC, K M E C, every Wednesday at 5 o'clock p.m. And that's an hour long show, and, and Tom usually uh, does a little bit of everything. He does updates of the national Occupy um, events, he does some music. Uh, Yesterday I listened in on the show and he was uh, did a couple of uh, plays. He had some plays that were pre-recorded uh, regarding some political actions. And so he does a little bit of everything. And if you have any information that you would like to have put out over the Occupy the Airwaves show that is pertinent um, to what we do, uh, get in touch with us at the GA and I'll make sure that Tom gets that information or I'll get you in touch with Tom. Um, and if you have any desire to go on the radio show uh, with an issue that you have or to play music or something like that, <clears throat> get in touch with us um, and we'll see that that happens. You could be a radio star. Also, we're looking for actors to uh, and actors and also technicians to get involved in this very TV show. We'd like to have more people helping out um, in the booth. We had Greg Simsek, who's here every week. Rain or shine, hot or cold, Greg's in there, and he does a great job uh, pushing the buttons and directing the cameras. We would love to have two or three other people that were willing to learn that end of the business so that we don't have to carry the entire load. We'd love to have somebody come and sit in this very seat, be the host of Occupy Ukiah, um, organize your show the way you want to, 
I don't want to be here every single, I love being here. I don't want to have to be here every single week. I've got a life too. So please come and join in. We want to do some fun things. We want to take the camera out on the street. We want to do some, uh, some uh, comedy skits. We want to have some fun. We're looking for some actors, that uh, somebody to be Joe Occupy, private investigator. And we're also looking for his sidekick, Mike Check. If you feel like that might be you, um, come on in and, and uh, talk to us. We're here at 6 p.m. on Thursdays oftentimes, or come to the GA and connect with us there. If you have any ideas for uh, things that could go on the TV show, um, pictures that you'd like to have shown of actions around the country or in the, in the local Mendocino area, bring them to us at the GA. We'll get them on the screen. We are only limited by our imaginations here, so come on and, and uh, help out. It's a lot of fun. You're welcome to join in. Um, that's pretty much it for our introduction today, and uh, next we're going to go to a new feature. It's called, Are You Happy With? And we'll be pulling this up from time to time. Um, first off, we're going to talk about the word Occupy. A lot of people are like, well, what does Occupy mean? You know, what are we talking about, Occupy? Well, I looked at the thesaurus and at the dictionary last night and just came up with some words that might help to explain. Occupy doesn't mean you necessarily have to put up a tent. It means to inhabit. Here, let me move to the side so you guys can read this too. Oh, boy, it's big. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you should make me smaller. Occupy means to inhabit. It means to, there we go, there we go. It means to move into. It means to take up residence, make one's home, to reside, to dwell. So in one sense, the people who were putting up tents in Zuccotti Park were occupying. But also let's think of it as making it your own and paying attention to it. Anything that you inhabit or take up residence in, you take care of. You keep an eye on it. If it's broken, you fix it. And a lot of people complain about our system these days. It seems to be horribly broken. So this feature we're calling, Are You Happy With? And what I want to know is, are you happy with the banks today here in America, with the bailout, with the foreclosures, with the fraud, with the taxes. A lot of people are very unhappy about that these days. And you watch it on TV, you listen to it on the radio, and you go, those damn banks, they got bailed out, and we got sold out. They made all this money, They're all, the CEOs are making record profits just after getting bailed out. But people are still getting foreclosed on and foreclosed on fraudulently. Robo-signing and all kinds of fraudulent um, uh, recording practices were part of what the banks uh, were involved in. B of A did not pay taxes in 2011. They made record profits. They paid no taxes. Now, how fair is that? How many billions of dollars is that taking out of what we all have to pay, and then the government comes and says, oh, we don't have any money. We're going to cut back on education. We're going to cut back on, on food for kids, on um, medicine for uh, pregnant mothers, or whatever it is. There's a lot of services that we have paid for with our taxes that are being cut back on. And a lot of the banks and large corporations today are not carrying their load in taxes. Are you happy about that? Is it okay with you? If it's okay with you, then go ahead and just sit back on the couch and feel satisfied. But I want to tell you it's going to change. We are out to change it. We are going to do something about it. And we're not going to stop. So if you're not happy with it, come and help us. Do something. I got tired of sitting going, those damn banks, this and that. I've been writing music about that stuff for a long time, and I felt like I had to do more. That's why I'm sitting here. 
That's why we go out. That's why we have our meetings on Sunday to plan this sort of thing. So please come help us out. If you feel passionately about this, let people know. There's something you can do. Everybody has a talent. How do you feel about corporations today? Are you happy with corporations? Do you feel like corporations are persons? Do you feel like they should have all the rights of a person? Do you feel like they should have equal rights of you? Are you happy that corporations can put unlimited amounts of money into the political system and have it be anonymous? And so basically whoever has the most money has the most speech. The Supreme Court said that money is speech. Corporations seem to have the most of it, so they get to have the most speech. Does that seem fair to you? Well, one of the main reasons why people got organized and joined Occupy is because that felt really wrong to them. And most of the people I talk to feel that that is really wrong. It was a huge, huge blunder by the Supreme Court. It needs to be corrected. Corporations, in my opinion and many people's opinion, are not persons. Money is not speech. If money is speech, only the rich will be heard from. So if you want to be heard from, come and join us because we are the 99%. You can't drown out that many people. There's no reason for the small percentage of people running these corporations to be running things. We are allowing a tiny percentage of the country to be the only ones to be heard in the halls of Congress, the lobbyists, and to be the only ones that have influence. Let's change that. We are going to change it. Come and help out. So, let's see. What else are you happy with? Um... Are you happy with the situation of education today? Um, I imagine that most of you, especially if you have kids, realize that a lot of teachers are getting fired. A lot of programs are getting cut. A lot of high schools can no longer have music departments. They're cutting their sports teams. They're cutting their shop, like their woodworking shops and things like that. They're cutting a lot back on on all kinds of um, great education that we could be having, we really should be thinking about expanding our schools. We had, a, uh, we had a little bit on here that we did, I think, in our first show, and I don't remember the numbers, but um, in the past few years, the number of prisons that have been built has far outweighed the number of um, schools that has built, been built by something like, Five to one or something even worse, Greg? I don't remember what it was, but it was horrendous. Do you, does that feel right? Do you feel like we should be building more prisons than schools? Schools is where our children spend their entire day. In fact, most kids spend more time at school than they do with their parents. Parents see them for a little bit in the morning. They say, see you after school. They see them a little bit in the evening. Maybe they watch TV. Maybe they help them with their homework. Then it's off to bed. The teacher is with them all day long. That teacher should be the most highly educated and well-paid person we can possibly put there. And what are we doing? We're cutting on education. Does that make you happy? We're not very happy about it. This is not a topic that Occupy Ukiah has really been able to sink our teeth into. We are in need of help. If you know about education, if you have an opinion on it, if you are passionate about it, Come and work on it with us because we have so many topics. Basically, you can point to any aspect of our life and ask yourself, are you happy with it? Are you happy with energy, meaning the, how we generate our electricity? Are you happy with the fact that we are oil dependent, that we're fighting wars over our oil dependency? Are you, are you happy with that? Don't you think that we should be putting all of our efforts into switching to solar, wind, geothermal, and tidal, and other forms of energy that will be here virtually forever. Oil is running out. We have reached peak oil. It's going to run out. 
So maybe we're going to have enough. I'm in my 50s. There will probably be enough for my lifetime, but I've got grandkids. I've got kids, and my grandkids are hopefully going to have grandkids and grandkids. Is the oil going to be there for them? Well, then it's upon us to start changing things now so that they aren't having an enormous crisis. We're already verging on crisis around this thing. Are you happy with our energy policy in this world? If you're happy with it, then just sit back and smile because we are going to change it. We will change it for you. If you like to sit and watch people do things, watch. We're going to change it. We are no longer going to be oil dependent whether we use it all up and change or whether we get smart and start changing now. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> um, we'll go for a couple more here. We don't want to take up all our time today. How happy are you with the environment? How about the air quality? Do you go to uh, the city? Do you go drive through Oakland and see the smog and all that wonderful cloudy brown air that's generated uh, down there on the docks and, and by all the cars on the highway? How about water? Do you like uh, drinking chlorinated, possibly polluted water here in town? Um, do you like uh, knowing that perhaps the, uh, the uh, Masonite factory has polluted the water all around that area and that it's in the groundwater, in the, in the water table? Um, how about the use of pesticides in our soil and all the chemical fertilizers? It's, uh, it's a pretty important thing that we take care of our environment for our grandkids, for their grandkids. The Native Americans, that's a pretty broad term, many of the tribes had a policy of seven generations. Whatever you did had to be able to be sustained for seven generations. We can barely bring something up that will last for one or two generations nowadays, or even seven years. We're moving too fast. We need to have a little bit more long-term view. The environment has been developed over millions and billions of years on this planet. It's the most successful laboratory there is. It's important for us to learn from nature and take care of it rather than use it up. We feel very strongly about this. It's something that we'd like to get more involved in in the Occupy Ukiah group. Please come and help. If you feel strongly about this, the environment um, is it's, it's square one. If we destroy our environment, we destroy our quality of life and our ability to live here. So please come help. These are all issues that we would like to that we would like to uh, pay more attention to and do things about. How about health care? How many of you don't have health care? I'm one. I don't have health care. I'm a landscaper. I work hard. I do a lot of stuff at home. I like to be active. I like to do active things. I am uh, one major injury or sickness away from bankruptcy. Um, so... If I have to go to the emergency room, it's going to cost thousands of dollars. I imagine most of, many of you are in that same boat. There's 55 million of us in this country who are in that boat. And many of us who do have coverage, who don't have very good coverage. Your insurance company says, no, sorry, you can't have that operation or that test or whatever, even though you've been paying them every month. Are you happy that an insurance company should make decisions about your health and your life. Does that make you happy? That infuriates me and a lot of people. Many, many, many people are protesting the fact that insurance companies are even involved in our health care. Why should they have their hand in between you and your doctor? Uh, why should anyone profit from your illness or injury? That doesn't make sense. Of course a doctor needs to be paid, a nurse needs to be paid, but why should an insurance company be rubbing their hands by all the money that you've been paying them? And then why should the hospital be making trillions of dollars and the, and the drug companies be making trillions of dollars 
when you get sick or injured. That is, that's a predatory system and it needs to stop. Healthcare in this country is horribly broken, as many of us know. Things need to be done about this. This is something that we really need to pay attention in this world. Many people go bankrupt if they get a serious illness. They lose their job, they lose their house, they have to spend all their money before they can get public assistance for their health care. That happened to my brother. He lost his job. Shortly after he lost his job, he found out that he had a liver disease. He was dead within six months. He couldn't get on public assistance until he spent all his money and he couldn't recover from that period. Many, many, many millions of people are in that same boat in this country. It needs to be changed. Um, I think Michael Moore said it the best, the, how you judge a society is how they take care of their sick and their elderly. We're not doing a very good job. Basically, the rich people get to have the best health care. Once again, it's the one percenters that are making the decisions. The senators that are making these health care decisions have awesome health care coverage. They should be forced to have the same coverage that everybody in the country has. And that means if there's people without, then they should go without. Isn't that only fair? I think we're going to close this up for today. I could go on and on, and we'll bring this feature back to the Occupy show. Basically, look at any aspect of our life. Health, shelter, food, transportation, education, military. We didn't get to a lot of those things. Are you happy with those in today's world? If you're not, let's do something about it. Let's do something together about it. Okay, so I think we're done with that, and we're going to bring up Ellen Faulkner, and she is a, a fellow Occupy Ukiah member, and she's also a, a really active person in uh, trying to save Richardson Grove. And Ellen's going to come and tell us all about uh, the history of Richardson Grove and the highway there and Caltrans and... A whole bunch of that stuff. Hi, Charlie. How are you doing? Hi, Ellen. Haven't seen you in a while. I've it's been, been well, right quite a 10 while. Ten or fifteen minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, too long. Too long. I know. So, why don't you give us a little history of of Richardson Grove? Okay, I want to uh, first describe what is Richardson Grove, where is it, and why is it important. Richardson Grove is right on the border between Mendocino County and uh, Humboldt County. And it's a, it's a small but beautiful state park where the redwood trees are more accessible than they are anywhere else in the world for people either just driving through or being able to stop by and walk through these beautiful old growth trees. And it's just a gem of a park. It's, it's uh, one of the hundred most wonderful state parks in the world. And um, to me, it's the state park that where everything comes together. Um, Caltrans wants to widen the road there. It's a little tiny road. It's a two-lane road, and um, it's not that tiny. It was built in 1915. The old growth trees have grown considerably since then, and they've adapted to that size of a uh, road. Caltrans wants to widen that road in order so that giant monster big trucks can go through there. There's plans to, uh, let's just say it, globalize Mendocino County, Humboldt County, and uh, Del Norte County by widening uh, 101, the 101 corridor all the way through there. So they want to bring in bigger trucks than already go through there? Or do uh, they just want the existing trucks to be able to go faster? That's what I've heard. They, they want, want to be able to go through there without... They want both. They want uh, the existing trucks to go faster. Yeah. They know that the biggest trucks made right now, um, about 63 feet long and 80,000 pounds, can go through there. Their speed limit is 35 miles an hour. But the big trucks, I've talked to quite a few truck drivers in the course of this... Um, of this work with Richardson Grove, and the truck drivers say, oh no, all we have to do is just go a little slower, 25 mm -hmm. miles an hour. 
um, we can, can do that perfectly safely. And I know they can because there's never been a truck accident in Richardson Grove. It's only a mile long. I mean, it's only a it's mile not through that there. Much. And so that means like, okay, you go 25 miles an hour yeah. with the biggest truck that is made, and you can get through there without any problems and at you all. And you can enjoy the redwoods while you're and at And you can. And the cars <laughs> that are going through there are 35 yeah. or even 45 miles an hour. Um, thank you. Will, um, they can slow down to 25, too. There's no problem with going 25 no. miles an hour through a one mile of some of the most beautiful trees in the world. Put up a sign saying, slow down for redwoods. And we have put that <laughs> sign up, and we have certainly put, we put that sign up All in right. a way that was really, really a lot of fun for us. We yeah. put on orange vests. Um, uh, me and my affinity group members, uh, we are members of the Echo Trans Affinity Group. Um, that's the way that Earth First deals with Caltrans, and it's been <laughs> maybe uh, 25 years that we've been involved with Ecotrans as our way of dealing with uh, Caltrans and his pesticide spray along the side of the road and all those sort of things that they do. And so uh, we just put on these orange vests and went out there um, along the right-of-way with signs that said, slow down. <laughs> uh, we had Burma sh right. sort of a Burma shape type of sign. Oh, right, right. Slow down, uh, you move too fast. Oh, yeah. You got to make the forest last. <laughs> right. So we had those seven signs, um, and Good. we uh, enjoyed it a whole lot. We, we haven't needed to do anything like civil disobedience or riling everybody up because we keep uh, in step with the litigation that's going on, uh, EPIC. Environmental Protection Information Agency has had an ongoing suit since uh, 2010. They, uh, the first, um, the first uh, plan was proposed. Then they got an injunction against that plan by uh, July of 2011, and recently we won a very large victory there. But to go back, why did we have to litigate? What was Caltrans planning? They were planning to take and widen that highway so that those big trucks could go through faster right. than 35 miles an hour, and everybody could speed on through there. And uh, and yeah. um, they said safety factor, but there's never been an accident there. They already have big trucks going through there. They have right. a waiver for the cattle trucks and for the moving trucks already. And I've seen some big trucks going through there. They're enormous. They just go slow. Great. The truck drivers say they can do it. Okay, I believe that. All they have to do is slow down. They don't have to m touch anything. But what they decided to do instead was widen the road so that these big trucks could speed through there. And to do that, they had to cut the roots of right. of uh, what they first said was 40 old-growth trees to cut the roots. But then... And then people had, were able to comment on that. But then, in the final uh, environmental assessment, they um, said that there were 79 old-growth trees that were going to be impacted uh, along that one-mile stretch. Went from 40 to 79. Right. Doubled, and pretty much. Doubled. And, those, and the comments, we had, we had no chance of commenting on the final. <laughs> so, um, there was a... There was a uh, litigation, and it, it resulted in a hearing that uh, they had the judge, Judge Bardis, who wasn't the same as he was lived near there, go up there with um, representatives from both sides to measure those trees. And they had Caltrans measuring the trees there, and it was a rather interesting situation where they rather looked like they were hugging those trees. <laughs> And, we got uh, a picture of that yeah, somewhere. We'll somewhere bring it up. Yeah, we got a picture. I hope it shows up. <laughs> yeah, here. that was really fun, and they um, and there was about thirty people in the woods there, and a, a lot of security. They thought oh, the bad guys, the Earth First people, were going to show up and bother. There it is. There's those we Caltrans tree huggers. There they are. Isn't you that wonderful? Them. Yeah. Oh, that's great. They hug well, trees, Well, if too. only they knew how valuable those trees were, they actually would go they hug would them, hug wouldn't them. they? They, they just would. don't quite get it. Right. There was a lot of things wrong with their um, environmental assessment. 
And one of the things that was wrong is that they measured trees like this so that they were smaller. So um, they didn't quite right. tell the truth about that. No, they didn't. Right. They, uh, and that made a big difference. So I know that there's a lot of info, and I think we're getting tight for time. So there was there was, was a, um, a, a decision recently. Yes. Tell us about that. The decision that. What happened? was that Caltrans did a sloppy job, and they went. They had to do it over again. The it was EIR. really bad. The, uh, the environmental, uh, environmental assessment. Imp yeah. And would either go to, uh, and, and they had to correct all their stuff that they did wrong. Right. And then, um, and then see if they could still get a finding of no significant impact. Well, they, uh, they looked at that and they decided maybe it would be better just to go ahead with a whole environmental impact statement, which is a lot more comprehensive. And it's a genuine hard look at what, uh, what kind of damage they might be doing. Right, right. So that set them back. They're going to have oh, to go back. back. They're going to have to go back and redo their environmental mm -hmm. report. That's right. But they'll be back. Oh, yes. They're always back. They're always back. They're always back. back for more. And there's always more litigation. And what we really would like was them just to go away and stop li litigating. Yeah, right. We'd like a lot of that in this alone. world. We'd leave us alone. Yeah. Uh, right. But, I mean, it's incredible. It's only one mile that people have to slow down. One mile. I mean, give it a break. If it was, you know, 50 miles or something, we could understand. But, you know, commerce isn't going to get a huge bruise in its little wallet, in its big wallet, over one mile of road. No, it isn't. So I think... It's awesome what you're doing, and Occupy Ukiah is going to be going up and doing some action with you when the time comes. Yes. D uh, and do you know when some of that stuff may be happening? Well, um, we have something planned for uh, Earth Day, and uh, right. d uh, just like one of the m easy celebratory type yeah. actions that yeah. we do when we have a victory. Right. And um, on May 15th, we're going to see how many Occupy other occupiers can come and help us occupy. We're going to actually, you know, uh, right. uh, reserve some spaces. And uh, Occupy Oakland has already decided that they would at least be able to send, oh, 15, 20 nice. people up. Nice. And it's because they need some R&R. &R. Yeah. They got troubles going on there. Well, not troubles. In they, Oakland. Oh, yeah. they're, they're, they're occupying foreclosed houses. Yeah. And they're being arrested and dragged off. Living in the city is not hard. They need to get up to the Redwoods. They and need some time <laughs> off. Have a break. And now, do. do you have some contact information that you want to pass on here? Have yes, we gotten that up yet? We do. Or not? We have. So you want to read out some of those, and then we'll oh, get them up on the screen. <laughs> some of the people. See. I know you. we're going to have you back on the show because it's hard to fit all this in. Yeah. And tonight, we usually can go a little over time. Tonight, we can't. So right. I definitely want to have you back. Okay, I'm going to have we'll to give you that We'll get a little more deeper into, well, maybe you can bring up some of those, uh, and we'll read them right off the screen there. Okay, I hope that can happen. Yeah, I think we can do that. Mm -hmm. Some of the uh, lower thirds. Oh, there's Epic. There we go. That's Epic. Uh, These are people that you can contact if you're interested in getting involved in the Richardson Grove um, issue. So Epic... And that's Occupy go. Richardson Grove. That's my affinity group uh, who's been just wonderful maintaining a presence there over a long period of time. They, they show up every Wednesday. That's the uh, Echo Trans Affinity Group. Uh, that's me, actually, the Echo Trans Affinity Group. If you want to get involved with the uh, actions that we're doing, you can, you can go ahead and get in touch with, uh, with them. And... Um, uh, then there's, oh, what is it, other ones? Oh, Naomi Wagner. <laughs> uh, that she's uh, Redwood Nation Earth First. Uh, she's uh, been involved with this from the onset, and, uh, and there's a good contact, too. All right. So um, this show will be showing on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Um, if you're watching it, you know that. And then... <laughs> It'll be again at 8 p.m. on Sunday. So uh, if you didn't get to write that down, if you're watching it in the morning, go ahead and watch that evening show at 8, and uh, you'll be able to write some of that down. If you didn't get it and you want to come out to one of our GAs, if you didn't get that information, come to our General Assembly, Alex Thomas Park, 10 a.m. You'll see our canopy. We can uh, hook you up with Ellen. We can get you involved. Um, it's a great thing. 
I mean, there's only a few redwoods left in the world. There's no reason why we can't slow down to 25 miles an hour for one mile. That's all we have to, to do. To honor what's left of the redwoods. Come on, people now. Wake up. It's, the rest, it's our planet here. Okay, we're going to have to say goodbye today, Ellen, to Bye. you. And uh, we're going to say goodbye to everybody from Occupy Ukiah. So we have uh, our Howard Zinn quote of the day. We'll go to the blue screen for that. And uh, a lot of people who get involved in protests these days, a lot of people who are involved in the Occupy movement, people say that they're not patriots. Mm -hmm. I disagree, <laughs> and Howard Zinn disagreed too. If you're interested in him, he had The People's History of the United States. It's an amazing book. The quote is, Dissent is the highest form of patriotism. And just like we talked earlier, if you don't like what's going on in your world today, do something about it. Please get up off the couch. Come out and join us. Start your own group. You don't have to join Occupy, but I'd love to see you out there trying to make things better. And so with that, we'll leave you. This is Charlie Vaughn and Ellen Faulkner saying goodbye, and we'll see you around town.